In this session, we are going to do a series of multiple choice questions that require us to apply our knowledge of linear functions. So the first question will require us to find the slope of the line through points A, which is 3, negative 2, and B, which is negative 2, negative 3. Find the slope. Of course, here the slope, uh, slope, is given by y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and that is going to give us y2 let's call this x1 y1 this is x2 y2 so y2 is going to become negative 3 minus y1 which is negative 2 divide that by x2 which is negative 2 minus x1 which is 3 we shall end up with negative 3 The slope we get is a fifth, so definitely our answer here is 1 over 5. The slope of line 8x plus 12y plus 5 is equal to 0 is, so that we just have to rearrange this equation in the form of y is equal to mx plus c, and we'll be able to tell the slope. So this being 8x plus 12y plus 5 is equal to 0. We make y the subject of the formula. So it means 12y remains this side of the equation. This is going to be equal to 5 goes that side and this 8. So it becomes negative 8x minus 5. Divide both sides by 12 by 12. This goes with that. You remain with y as negative 8 over 12x minus 5 over 12. Now, this is in the form of y is equal to mx plus c, and we all know that this is the gradient. So, uh, negative 8 over 12, to simplify this further, by 2 we have 4, by 2 we have 6, by 2 we have 2, by 2 we have 3. So the answer is negative 2 over 3, that is the ultimate slope. So coming here, negative 2 over 3 is b. Here they're telling us that the slope of the line perpendicular to this line is... Again, this is 3x minus 5y plus 8 is equal to 0. We need to arrange this in the form of y is equal to mx plus c so that we're able to find the value of m, which is the slope of, that, of this line. After finding the slope of this line, then we shall be able to find the slope of the perpendicular line to this one. So we make y the subject of the formula here. Uh, let's bring this negative 5y brings this side this becomes 3x plus 8 is going to give us 5y or if we re rearrange it it becomes 5y is going to be equal to 3x plus 8 divide both sides by 5 all through by 5 so that this goes with that you remain with y giving you 3 over 5x plus 8 over 5 so now this is the gradient of this line. Now, a line perpendicular to this means that the gradient of this is going to be the negative reciprocal of this one. So, meaning that if this is going to be, if the gradient of that line is 3 over 5, the gradient of the line perpendicular to this one is going to become the negative reciprocal. So, it's going to be negative 5 over 3. Why? Because when we get this gradient of this line times the gradient of that line, when we multiply them, they're supposed to give us negative 1. So the answer here is negative 5 over 3. This is the gradient of the other perpendicular line we are looking for. And so there, here the answer is negative 5 over 3. The answer is A. So we have the y-intercept of the line through the two points whose coordinates are this and that. So definitely here we are just going to find the equation of this line and then we will be able to find the y-intercept. So finding the equation of this line, remember the gradient y is equal to mx plus c give c is the y-intercept so if we find the equation of this line in this form we are able to identify the value of c and the value of c is the y-intercept so we begin by finding the gradient of this line which so happens to be the value of m so it means that the gradient of this line uh they call it the slope or the gradient is going to be equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 that's going to be y2 which is going to be 3 minus y this is y2 minus y1 which is negative 2 divide that by 1 minus 5 that's going to be 3 plus 2 which is 5 divide that by negative 4 
So this is negative 5 over 4. That is the gradient of this line. So to find the value of C, we are going to substitute still this y is equal to mx plus c and find the value of c with one of these points. So we shall pick one of the points. Let's pick point 1, comma 3. So y is equal to mx plus c. So what's our value of y? Uh, our value of y we, we've picked on this point. So our value of y will be 3. So it's going to be 3. It's going to be equal to the gradient m, which is negative 5 over 4 times our value of x, which is 1, plus c. So we make C the subject of the formula here. C becomes is equal to 3. Uh, when this one comes, that will become plus 5 over 4. And when we add those two, adding those two, uh, the LCM there is 4. So our value of C here is going to be 17 over 4. So in this one, they're telling us that the equation of the perpendicular bisector of the segment joining points whose coordinates are this and this is. So they want us to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of a segment that is joining points whose coordinates are this. So the interpretation of this is simply this, that we are having a line, a line that is having this point 1,4. And also it's having that point negative 2 comma 3 this line is joining these two points but now these two points that are being joined this line basically it's having what we call a perpendicular bisector this perpendicular bisector me if it because it is a bisector it means it is going to uh, go through this line in the middle because the question is calling it a perpendicular bisector. A perpendicular bisector meaning that first of all, it is perpendicular. It is meeting this other line at 90 degrees. And it is a bisector meaning that it is dividing these two points into two. It's passing exactly in the middle. So, of course, for us to find the equation of this perpendicular bisector, which is one of these, is simply, one, we need to find the gradient of this perpendicular bisector. If we know the gradient of this line, the gradient of this perpendicular bisector is simply the negative reciprocal of the gradient of this line. Since we already know that the gradient of this line times the gradient of that line is supposed to give us negative 1. Then also the second thing is that this perpendicular bisector, because it is bisecting this line, it is start passing in the middle. So we can get the point, one of the points that this line is passing through, which is in the midpoint of these two points. So we can first of all get the midpoint of this point because it is where this line is passing. So the midpoint of this point first, then after getting the midpoint, then we can go ahead and find the gradient of this line so that we are able to find the gradient of the perpendicular bisector. And then from there we shall be able to find the equation of this line. So to start it off, let's first find the midpoint of this line. So midpoint. The midpoint here is, um, it's going to become x1 plus x2 divided by 2. So it's going to be 1 plus negative 2 divided by 2, comma. Then we have y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So y1 is 4 uh, plus 3, divide that by 2. And definitely that is going to end up giving us 1 minus 2, which is negative a half, comma. This is 4 plus 3 which is 7 over 2 so this is the midpoint this is so this is the midpoint and uh, so meaning that as far as the perpendicular bisector is concerned the perpendicular bisector is going through this point so let's go ahead and find the gradient of this line so to find the gradient of that line is going to be equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 that is going to be equal to, let's call this x1, y1, this is x2, y2. So it means that our y2 here is 3 minus y1, which is 4. Divide that by our x2, which is negative 2, minus our x1, which is 1. 
and therefore that is going to give us a 3 minus 4 is negative 1 divide that by negative 2 minus 1 is going to give us negative 3 definitely that is a third so the gradient of this line is a third now so if the gradient of this line right here is a third it means the gradient of the perpendicular bisector is the negative reciprocal of this so it means it's going to be the negative reciprocal which is negative 3 over 1 because when you multiply this by that it's supposed to give us negative 1 so it means that it is negative 3 over 1 or which is called call it negative 3 so it means that the perpendicular bisector its gradient is negative 3 so we already have two things we have the gradient of this perpendicular bisector we also have the point through which it is passing which is the midpoint of these two points so now that we have these two we can go ahead and find the equation of this line using y is equal to mx plus c so from y is equal to mx plus c we know that uh, this perpendicular bisector is passing through what this midpoint let's call this point y this is point x y so y is 7 over 2 so we shall say 7 over 2 is going to be equal to our gradient m we got our gradient here as negative 3 so it's going to be negative 3 times our value of x which value of x is negative 1 over 2 negative 1 over 2 plus c so we're trying to find the value of c so this is going to become uh, 7 over 2 is going to give us negative 3 times negative 1 which is going to be 3 over 2 plus c when we make c the subject of the formula c becomes 7 over 2 minus 3 over 2 our value of c in this case is going to become 4 over 2 which is definitely giving us 2 so our value of c is 2 now that we have known that our value of c is 2 we can go ahead and substitute in this equation to get our answer so from y is equal to mx plus c our value of y is going to be equal to the gradient m which we got as negative 3 so it's going to become negative 3 x plus c our value of c is 2 so it's plus 2 so we, we rearrange this equation so that it's equal to 0 so that we see which of these equations is here so meaning that this is going to become uh, y plus 3x minus 2 is equal to 0, um, which is the same as 3x plus y minus 2 is equal to 0. And if you look at this equation, if you come here, 3x plus y minus 2 is equal to 0, our answer here is c. The length of a segment joining the points with these coordinates is so now we are looking at the length of the segment of course so we shall simply this is x1 y1 this is x2 y2 when you're trying to find the length of the segment let's call this segment a b so when we want to find a b a b is going to be equal to we're looking at the square root of y1 minus y2 this is squared plus x1 minus x2 and this is also square this is going to be under the square root of y1 which is 4 minus y2 which is negative 5 this is whole squared plus x1 which is negative 2 minus x2 which is 3 so we shall end up having the square root of this is 4 plus 5 which is 9 9 squared is 81 plus um, negative 5 this is uh, negative 5 squared is 25 so we shall end up having to find uh, AB is the square root of 106 now the square root of 106 is approximately 10.3 so our answer is 10.3 so the slope of the line parallel to the line whose equation is that is so we know that Parallel lines have the same slope. So meaning that if we have this the, 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 the slope of this line, we have the slope of that parallel line. So the slope of the line parallel to the line whose equation is this is. So what's the slope of this one? We rearrange this equation by making y the subject of the formula so that we put it in the form of y is equal to mx plus c. So this is going to become 2x 
plus 3y is equal to 8. We make this becomes 3y is going to become 8 minus 2x. Of course, y becomes 8 over 3 minus 2x over 3. So if you look at it, this in the form of y is equal to mx plus c, this becomes y is equal to negative 2 over 3x plus 8 over 3. So this is the gradient of the line, negative 2 over 3. And since it is a, par it is a parallel to that, the, 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 the slope of the line we are looking for is parallel to this line, it means that that gradient is also negative 2 over 3. So the answer here is c. In this question, they're telling us that if the graph pi x plus square root of 2y plus root of 3 is equal to 0 is perpendicular to this graph, then what is a? Now, they're asking us to find the value of a. Now, if you look at uh, this graph, it is perpendicular to that graph. And we find that this a they are asking is actually a coefficient of x. And we all know that in the form y is equal to mx plus c, that form of equation, the value of m is the coefficient of x. Let me write it here. y is equal to mx plus c. The value of m is the gradient and it is a coefficient of x. And when you look at this equation, they are asking us to find the value of a, which a is a coefficient of x. So it means that what we are going to do, we are going to make this equation look like this one, so that we know the value of m in this equation then we are also going to make this one look in this form y is equal to mx plus c so that this m is put in perspective so that we can easily identify the value of m then uh, since the two this one and that one are perpendicular it means that the gradient of this equation is the negative reciprocal of this so let's get started with the working so this is going to become this way. So we have pi x plus square root of 2y plus root of 3 is equal to 0. So what we are going to do here is to make y the subject of the formula so that we convert this equation in the form of y is equal to mx plus c. So this means this is going to become root of 2. y is going to be given by negative pi x minus 3. When we divide through by root 2, divide by root 2, divide by, by root 2, this goes with that, remain with y, giving us negative pi over root 2 of x minus 3 over root 2. Actually, this 3 is, under, is also under the square root. So this is, this is y is equal to mx plus, so this is the value of m, the gradient. This is the gradient of this of this graph. But now remember this gradient here is the gradient of this graph. Since this equation is perpendicular to that, it means that the gradient of this is supposed to be the negative reciprocal of the other. In other words, when we get this gradient of this, multiply that gradient by this, we are supposed to be getting negative 1. So looking at this, the gradient of this is negative pi over root 2. That's the gradient of this. So it means that the gradient of this one right here is the negative reciprocal of this. So it's going to be the negative reciprocal of this. The reciprocal of this is root of 2 divide that by pi and that is still negative. Negative root of 2 over pi so it means that of course negative times negative gives it gives it a positive so it means that the gradient of this thing is actually positive root of 2 over pi and when you multiply these two it's supposed to give us negative 1 so we know now the gradient of this the gradient of this is now a positive square root of 2 divide that by pi that's the gradient so now that we know the gradient of that so now we make this one become we rearrange this equation into the form of y is equal to mx plus c. So the equation is ax plus 3y plus 2 is equal to 0. So we are supposed to rearrange that into the form of y is equal to mx plus c. So this is going to become 3y is going to be equal to 
negative ax minus 2. Divide both sides by 3. Our value of y becomes negative a over 3 x minus 2 thirds. So this is our value of m. This is our value of m, the gradient. So what happens is that we compare this to that. We equate the two since they are the same to get the value of a. So this means that this is going to become negative a over 3 is going to be equal to square root of 2 over pi. When we make a the subject of the formula, a becomes uh, 3 times the square root of 2, divide that by pi, and this is negative. And of course, when you compute that, you're going to end up with, you're going to end up with this answer, c. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Xembo Academy, this is Anwar Rangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.